Okay, we're now in chapter 12, and we'll just look at the first six verses, uh, which concerns the woman and the dragon. Now, chapter 12 is what we call an interlude or a parathetical chapter. So it's still very much part of John's vision. John is, uh, is seeing and recording what he's seeing. But there are, there are timeouts, there are pauses in the storyline, that the ongoing storyline, the storyline of, of the handover of the scroll and then uh, the breaking of the seals and the blowing of the trumpets, the pouring of the bowls that's going to lead up to the Battle of Armageddon. In, some midst, in the midst of all this, uh, there will be timeouts. Uh, and chapter 12 through 14, 17 and 18, these are timeout chapters. These are parentheticals that it's going to be like, okay, John, you've seen what you're seeing. I bet you've got some questions here. Um, as you can imagine, there's a, so much more to the story here. So let's go back and we'll review and add a little more detail to help you understand uh, what you're being shown. So these parenthetical chapters, they're important. Uh, they're important keys to interpreting what's been disclosed. They're going to give background and explanation. Uh, many times from a different perspective, um, some of the explanations are going to be historical. I mean, they're going to be way before even uh, uh, the, the story starts in Book of Revelation, like the time of, of the birth of Christ. Um, or even before then, they're going to dig deeper into what had just happened. Uh, maybe just to drill down and give some further details. They're going to expand on what is presently happening uh, in, in, in the here and now in the timeline of the story, but also they're going to look forward into the future as well of what is going to happen but has not happened yet. So that's to say they're often not on the same timeline. And sometimes that will that will confuse uh, uh, reading of Revelations, like, okay, where'd this come from and why and how? Well, this is the this is this is what's going on. It's just an explanation. So uh, just take it in mind that the events being described are not always on the same timeline as the storyline itself. So now we're going to go into chapter 12, and we're going to look at the woman and the dragon, the first six uh, verses. Verse 1, chapter 1, I mean chapter 12. And a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. She was pregnant and was crying out in birth pains and the agony of giving birth. So in our first read, it, you know, our eyes might be this big. It's like, what in the world we're talking about here? But first and foremost, John tells us there's a great sign, a sign. And that great sign is being applied to both the woman and the dragon, which tells us what? This is, this is now symbolism, okay? Um, and the woman, I'm just going to, I'm just going to, without going into all the, uh, the pain of, of dissecting all this, because there's a lot of different versions of interpretations, I'm going to tell you what I believe and what I feel like Scripture fully supports. The woman is Israel, Okay? or possibly the faithful remnant of Israel. But the woman is Israel. Um, and here's a quote. The Old, the Old Testament, the, the prophets, they portrayed righteous Israel as a member of the restored future remnant of Israel. And um, I just felt like the NIV application commentary, Craig Keener, um, he, just, he, he just so succinctly Describe this, I just quoted him. Uh, and then he referred to Isaiah and Micah passages that are there for, um, for your digging. Also, Jewish tradition oftentimes portrays Israel as a mother. Okay, so a mother at one time, a woman that was pregnant, crying out in birth pains, giving birth. Her crown of 12 stars, they are the 12 
tribes of Israel. So I'm just going to kind of like leave it at that, but just kind of give you a flavor of what else is out there. One is out there was um, a, a sign in the constellations because of the verse says, well, there's a great sign and it appeared in heaven. So if it appeared in heaven, it must we must look to the stars and the constellations. And now the constellations, there's one constellation that's a woman, not an animal or a man. And that is the is the constellation of Virgo. And there is this phenomena that's happening with the, the uh, with stars and planets uh, and the alignment with the sun and the moon, that it just all lines up to, to this passage in Revelation. And there, you're, we're going to have um, Jupiter that comes inside her in, her in the womb area of the constellation for, um, for 42 weeks. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, um, all this was summarized and astronomers told Will, this is a once in a 7,000 year event. And it's going to happen 23rd September 2017 when she gives birth. All right. So all that to say is that, and then of course you got Leo, which is a, a Jesus, the lion of the tribe of, Ju of Judah. So um, all that to say is that there was at one time a crying out saying um, the end is near. It's going to happen the 23rd of September, 2017. So put your house in order. Make ready the way of the Lord. Well, as we know, 23rd September, 2017 is now in the past, and it didn't happen. So, then it's like, uh, wait a minute. That was just the middle of the seventh week, not the end. Sorry, our bad, our bad. It's the, it's the middle. So we got three and a half years. So we got three and a half years for all this to go down. So prepare, make your way for the Lord. Uh, that's going to happen in 2021. Well, um, we're now in 2022. So that did not happen. So anyway, uh, let's toss that aside. There are others that go say, wait a minute, wait a minute. And I think we got a good idea of the major denomination out there that says the woman clothed in the sun is what? The Virgin Mary. Okay. Um, and she, and obviously she was with child and she was the, the mother of Jesus Christ. Um, yeah, but uh, it just doesn't fulfill the rest of the prophecy. And so... The Virgin Mary and the twelve stars, which is, which is so often portrayed as a halo, and in, in some of this um, uh, stained glass art that we find in uh, cathedrals and whatnot, um, it just doesn't all line up. Then we got others that go, no, 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 it's not Israel, or the remnant of Israel, um, or the Virgin Mary. It's the Church. The woman is the Church. And they give passages to support that. And they say, she is clothed with the sun. Well, God, that's the, being covered with the righteousness of Christ, which involves keeping his commandments. And they give more supporting scripture. And the moon under her feet uh, represents the uh, proclamation of, of the gospel, the gospel of Jesus Christ. And they throw those passages in and upon her head is a crown. Well, that represents God's character and their reward. That will be given at the second coming of Jesus Christ. So if you want to uh, go and explore that rabbit hole, uh, there it's there uh, for your exploring. Then there's others, and there's some similar parallels here. The woman is Zion in labor, quoted in Isaiah, uh, being nourished for 1260 days. Uh, she gives a child. Well, that child is birthing the new Jerusalem. And uh, that's found in Isaiah 66. Well, the child being Jesus Christ, he does usher in the new Jerusalem, but that's not the case. Of course, the, the dragon is Satan that is cast out of heaven. And then last but not least, well, it could be the woman is Wonder Woman. Um, after all, the actress playing here, she is a, um, she's a lovely uh, Jewish lady. So, uh, with that, let's move on. 
Revelations 12 and verse 3. And another sign appeared in heaven. Behold a great red dragon with seven heads and ten horns, and on his head seven diadems. His tail swept down a third of the stars of heaven and cast them to earth. So what's going on here? Well, the great red dragon in, in uh, the fashion that uh, John has is, is done time and time again in Revelation is explained later in verse 9 and elsewhere in Revelation. And that is the devil, the Satan, uh, the seven heads and ten horns on his head, seven diadems. This was first revealed, if you recall, when we were going through uh, the book of Daniel. Uh, this is part of the fourth kingdom of the Antichrist in Daniel 7. Um, also, this dragon is seen uh, with Babylon, the great prostitute. And we're going to get into that when we get into Revelation 17. Um, however, uh, in that passage, there's more that we will need to uh, uh, to explore because there are seven kingdoms and an eighth kingdom that has to be considered in that passage. His tail swept down a third of the stars of heaven and cast them to earth. Um, well, it, it's... It's not explained when this occurs, as it seems, but it seems to be separate from the war and the casting out that we read, we'll read about in uh, verses 7 through 9 of chapter 12. Um, we can also compare this with Daniel 8.10, where uh, it talks about, It grew great, even to the host of heaven. And some of the hosts and some of the stars, what? It threw down to the ground and trampled on the earth. Talking about the Antichrist uh, being possessed by Satan and Satan being cast out. Now the, um, the ten horns, the, um, uh, the seven heads, the, uh, um, the seven crowns, um, all of that is something that we have already um, explored in Daniel um, and then of course we're going to explore later in, in Revelation but you see here the fourth beast uh, which was the beast of the Antichrist and uh, there was ten crowns that was on its head and then there was a little horn and there was three horns that fell off so that leaves seven remaining um, heads um, and then in Revelation 13 and 17, we see numerous past, uh, references to ten horns, seven heads, ten crowns or diadems. Um, and then even the Daniel 2 kingdom, remember uh, the statue that was revealed to uh, King Nebuchadnezzar, the statue of, of gold and, and silver chests and iron uh, legs and, and feet of uh, iron and clay oh, and the bronze as well. Um, remember the feet and toes, which were very fundamental and key, and that was part of the, uh, the, the kingdom of the Antichrist. That was what? Feet and toes of iron and clay. Well, guess what? Feet have what? Ten toes. So uh, there's a lot uh, that uh, you can explore and review um, from previously when we, we talked about this. Verse 4. Second half of verse 4. And the dragon stood before the woman who was about to give birth, so that when she bore her child, he might devour it. So he's there ready for her to give birth. And as soon as she gives birth, he's what? He's going to pounce on the child and devour it. And she gave birth to a male child, one who is to rule all the nations with a rod of iron, Satan knew this. He knows scripture inside and out. And he was ready to destroy um, the Messiah, or at least try. But her child was caught up to God and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she has a place prepared by God in which she is to be nourished for 1260 days. So there is so much crammed into these, these few verses in Revelation chapter 12 and so much on a timeline that is crammed, both historical 
uh, and future. Verse 4, uh, the, the second half, uh, where the dragon stood before the woman and was about to give birth so that he might devour. That's all historical. Because remember, when King Herod heard about the coming Messiah from the wise men, what did he try to do? He was used by Satan to destroy the Messiah. And how was that done? By killing all the babies in and near Bethlehem that were under two years of age. And you can read about that in Matthew chapter 2, but as we know, what? The child escaped. Verse 5 expands the entire lifetime of Jesus' first coming, who, after he was uh, crucified on the cross and that he died, was buried, resurrected, uh, and what happened at the resurrection? He was caught up to God in his throne. That's Christ's ascension in Acts uh, chapter 1, where it says he sat down at the right hand of God. He's waiting from that time until his enemies should be made a footstool, footstool for his feet, which is where we're at right now. Verse 6, now we're getting into current and future of Jacob's trouble. Okay, so the woman fled to the wilderness where she has a place prepared by God where she's to be nourished for 1260 days. What all is that about now? Why do you say that's future? Well, remember, we spent a whole session on Jacob's trouble and, and what's going to happen there. And we'll dig, we'll refresh ourselves and, and, and dig deeper into this. But uh, Jacob's trouble, God's protection for the remnant and who the remnant of Israel is going to be during the second half of the Great Tribulation or, or the second half of, of Daniel 77th, where she is going to be nourished. To be nourished, uh, the Greek word trifle means to nourish, to feed, but also to support, also to cherish and provide for. Okay. So, what all is this fulfilling? All right, we we now we we read where the woman fled into the wilderness, and she is where she has a place prepared by God, in which she is to be nourished for twelve hundred sixty days, such as three and a half years, or time times and a half, or forty two months. Take your pick. Okay. Remember in Zechariah thirteen, starting verse eight, where. Um, God says, in the whole land, declares Yahweh, what's going to happen? Two-thirds shall be cut off, and they will perish. And one-third, the remnant, shall be left alive. And I will put this third, however, into the fire and refine them as one refined silver. And I will test them as gold is tested. And then what happens? They will call upon my name, and I will answer them, I being Yahweh. I will say, they are my people, and they will say, the Lord Yahweh is my God, and also Yeshua, the one whom they pierce, um, they will recognize as the Messiah. Daniel 12 and I heard the man clothed in linen who was above the waters of the stream. He raised his right hand and his left hand towards heaven and swore by him who lives forever that it would be what? For a time, times, and half a time. And that when the shattering of the power of the holy people comes to an end, all these things would be finished. So, for 1260 days, there will be, uh, a, this will start with the shattering of the power of the holy people. That's when the God's elect of the Jewish people, everything is taken away from them. Everything that they could put their faith on will be taken away. Of, away. Everything uh, they will they will be left with no hope whatsoever but to call upon God. 
This is also foretold in Deuteronomy 32. Remember the song of Moses, uh, Moses' warning before the children of Israel crossed the river Jordan. For the Lord, Yahweh, will vindicate his people and have compassion on his servants when? When he sees that their power is gone. Okay, the shattering of power as in Daniel. When he sees that their power is gone and there is none remaining, bond or free, and then he will say, where are their gods? You know, with a little g, the rock in which they took refuge, who ate the fat of their sacrifices and drank the wine of their drink offering. Let them rise up and help you. Let them be your protection. See now that I, the Lord, Yahweh, even I, Yeshua, am he, and there is no God beside me, declaring the Lord. I kill, I make alive, I wound, and I heal. And that is just a very succinct summary of Jacob's trouble. And there is none that can deliver out of my hand. So there will be two-thirds that will be killed, that will be destroyed. There will be one-third that he will refine, um, that, uh, that he will heal, and then what? They have his divine protection that no one can deliver them out of his hand. Also foretold by the prophet Isaiah, where he says, A voice cries in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord in the wilderness, where the woman fled. Prepare the way of Yahweh. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Um, as foretold by the prophet Hosea in chapter 2, verse 14, Therefore, behold, I will, I, Yahweh, I, Yeshua will allure her and bring her where? Into the wilderness. The woman fled into the wilderness and speak tenderly to her. A place prepared by God in which she is to be nourished for 1260 days as foretold in Revelation chapter 12. So, all of this, uh, Jacob's trouble, all that we're reading about in Revelation, all that we've read about in the Old Testament prophets, this is all part, if you recall, the new covenant. The new covenant for Israel, which, by the way, those of us Gentiles in Christ are now, what, citizens of Israel that we've just talked about. We are now recipients of this covenant that's going to be fulfilled in Revelation. Now, what's this covenant? Well, it was first foretold by the prophet Ezekiel, by the prophet Jeremiah in Ezekiel 36. Therefore say to who? The Israelites. This is what the sovereign Lord Yahweh says. It's not for your sake, people of Israel, that I'm going to do these things, but for the sake of my holy name. And then the nations will know that I am Yahweh declares the sovereign Yahweh when I am proved holy. How? Through you. I'm going to use you to prove myself holy, prove myself faithful before their eyes. How is this going to be done? Well, for I will take you out of the nations. I will gather you from all the countries. I will bring you back into your own land. I will sprinkle clean water. That's what? Remember, we read about it in Ephesians, living water, the word of God on you. Well, that is what? Cleansing the bride. If you recall, that was the mikveh uh, in the Jewish wedding ceremony. And you will be clean. clean. Why? Because I, the Lord, will cleanse you from all your impurities, from all your idols. I, the Lord, will give you a new heart 
I, the Lord, will put a new spirit in you. I, the Lord, will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And I, the Lord, will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and to be careful to keep my laws. Then you will live in the land I gave your ancestors. And as we've heard before, you will be my people and I will be your God. Very, very powerful. As foretold by the prophet Jeremiah in chapter 31, the days are coming. Well, we know what those days are. We're, we're just reading about it in, in Revelation verse 12. I mean, chapter 12. Declares Yahweh, the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel. It will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors, back at Mount Sinai, back in the days of Egypt, um, when I took them by the hand and led them out of Egypt to Mount Sinai, because when I gave my marriage proposal to them, what? They broke my covenant, though I was a husband to them. So, therefore, the days are coming. This is the covenant I will make with the people of Israel. After that time declares Yahweh, I will put my law in their minds. I will write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. No longer will they teach their neighbor or say to one another, know the Lord, know Yahweh, know Yeshua, because... They will all know me, from the least of them to the greatest. Why? For I will forgive their wickedness and remember their sins no more. Very, very powerful message um, that um, has been given through the prophets and been given to uh, the Apostle John in Revelation. And who mediates all of this new covenant? Well, as we will know, it is our Lord Jesus Christ. Yeshua, the Anointed One, the Messiah. As recorded in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 15, For this reason, Christ, the Anointed One, the Messiah, is the mediator of a new covenant that those who, who are called, that being the elect, that being the remnant, the, the, the remaining one-third that survived um, this, this, this catastrophic occupation in, in uh, Jerusalem during the times of the Antichrist, may, that it flee out into the wilderness, may receive what? The promised eternal inheritance that God promised through his covenant. Now that he has died as a ransom, that was the first co coming of the Lord, to set them free from their sins committed under the first covenant. Very, very, very powerful uh, message. So uh, the, uh, the, the Hebrew nation the, of the 12 tribes of Israel, the Jewish people, Yes, they will be given a very, very special second chance. But for those of us Gentiles, that is not anything to be envied. Because in Christ, we have our promised inheritance of the kingdom of God. So, I'm going to leave it there. Uh, next week, we will continue in chapter 12 starting in verse 7, uh, where Satan is thrown down to earth as a result of a war in heaven. So, be blessed.